Good morning. We would like to welcome you to the Sunday morning services here at the Boonville Church of Christ. We are very excited and very thankful that you've decided to be with us this morning. Leading, leading us in our worship this morning will be Bo Gross leading us in singing. Brother Stephen Hodgson will be bringing the message to us at the appropriate time. Please join in now as we worship together. First song this morning, Faith is the Victory. Please sing along with me at home. Encamped along the hills of life, ye Christian soldiers rise, and press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies. Against the foe in veils below, let all our strength be hurled. Faith is the victory we know that overcomes the world. Faith is a victory, faith is a victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. To him that overcomes the foe, white raiment shall be given. Before the angels he shall know his name confessed in hell. Then onward from the hills of light, our hearts with love aflame will vanquish all the host of night in Jesus' conquering name. Faith is a victory, faith is a victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. Psalm before opening prayer, take time to be holy. Take time to be holy, speak off with thy Lord. Abide in him always, and feed on his word. May friends of God's children. Help those who are weak, forgetting in nothing is blessings to see. Take time to be holy, the world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone, abiding in Jesus, like him thou shalt be, thy friends and thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy, be Come in thy soul, each thought and each motive beneath his control. Thus, led by his Spirit to fountains of love, thou soon shall be filled. For service above. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. So very thankful that we can be together. We can come together using this technology and here at this building to worship you. Father, we, we set apart this time and, and we thank you this morning, thanking you for your greatness, for your love for us and your goodness. We thank you, Father, that you provide for us. We thank you, Father, that you care for us. And we just ask you, Lord, this morning, uh, we, we, we pray that this worship, everything that we do, everything that we say will be pleasing to you. We give you the glory in all things. 
Father, we are mindful of those who are uh, of our congregation who are sick, and we just ask you to please be with them. Pray, Father, that they would uh, soon feel better and, and be able to be with us and worship with us. We pray for those who might have lost loved ones, and we just ask you to comfort them. Father, we have many here who need our prayers, many who are hurting and may be going through struggles, and we just ask you, Lord, to be with them. We ask that each of us would uh, be able to reach out to those who need us. Father, we know that uh, we're in a difficult time, and we just ask you to be with us here at this congregation and all the leaders, uh, those who are making decisions, that you would give them wisdom to make the right decisions for this congregation. We just ask you as we meet together that you would uh, keep us safe, that you would be with us as we come together next week. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We ask all this in his name. Psalm before the message this morning, soldiers of Christ arise. Soldiers of Christ arise and put your armor on. Strong in the strength which God supplies. Strong in the strength which God supplies through his beloved Son. Strong in the Lord of hosts, and in his mighty power, who in the strength of Jesus strong, who in the strength of Jesus strong, is more than conqueror, that having all things done, and all your conflicts pass, you may all come to cry alone. You may all come to Christ alone and stand entire at last. Good morning. Thank you for being a part of this worship service. It is very encouraging to know that you care enough about God and enough about uh, you want to worship, that you tuned in this morning. And I'll be honest, it's going to be exciting to be able to see faces out there uh, next week. But thank you for being a part of our worship service today. As we open our Bibles, as we continue our worship, uh, we have approached God's throne in prayer. We have uh, sang songs of praise to our Heavenly Father, and as we allow Him to speak to us this morning through His Word and we open His truth, I hope you'll listen to the things He has to say to us this morning. Well, tomorrow is Memorial Day. And while I know that uh, a three-day weekend and Memorial Day means a whole lot of different things to different people uh, in our society today, Memorial Day originally, it was originally called Decoration Day, and it began in the years following the Civil War and made a federal holiday in 1971. Uh, Memorial Day is a day set aside to remember those who have died in military service. And as one put it, Memorial Day is the day we set aside to remember in gratitude, appreciation, pride, and respect those who have served and died in fighting for and protecting the freedoms that we enjoy in this country. And I think that's well said. And so... While Memorial Day is on our mind, I thought it would be apt to, to think about what it means to be a soldier of the cross. Now understand, that's a biblical topic, because when we look, in fact, in our text, our lesson text for today is going to be found in, um, before we get to our lesson text, let, let's have a little spiritual perspective. In Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24, Jesus said there, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. And then in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 25, we find Paul talking about other Christians as fellow soldiers. 
And then in 1 Timothy 6 and verse 12, Paul wrote to Timothy through inspiration, saying, fight the good fight of faith. And then in Galatians 20 again, Paul writes, uh, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, when we take all of those verses and we think about them, when we let them sink in, then the conclusion is clear. Christians are soldiers of the cross. Now, before we get into the text this morning, I almost got ahead of myself, before we get into our text this morning, it is absolutely, and of course since we're live, I'm going to do something like pull my microphone off, but uh, since I am old and done this longer than some of you have been breathing, I won't worry about it, just put it back on there and keep going. Uh, the conclusion is we are Christians, we are soldiers of the cross. Now, what I want you to understand simply is this, is that Paul, the Bible, Holy Spirit, God, they weren't using those terms, metaphors, just to uh, be literarily clever so that we as human beings would like it, so we would say, oh, we, we get that. I want you to understand that this metaphor, this comparison doesn't have a, an earthly meaning. It has an earthly understanding. Meaning there is a lesson for you and me to understand. There is a lesson that not only is important for me to learn, it is essential for me to understand. Because it has eternal, spiritual ramifications and applications. So, let's look at our text in this morning in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. Now let's read it together. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. I'm reading from the New King James Version there. Now, again, please understand, there is something you and I have to know. If the Bible, if Paul, if the Holy Spirit, if God is using the understanding of being a soldier using the understanding of, of being in warfare, then there must be something that I need to know and take to heart and apply in my life. So just a few moments, for just a few moments this morning, may I share four things with you from this text about being a soldier of the cross. Number one, a soldier of the cross lives commitment. Look at verse uh, 4. Who enlisted him as a soldier. Who enlisted him as a soldier. The idea of being enlisted there, the Greek word, has, means being enrolled as a soldier by a commander. Okay, so if I am a Christian then, if I have obeyed the gospel of Christ, if I have been baptized into Christ, then according to this text, I've been enlisted as a soldier. That definition means enlisted by a commander. I follow a commander. I no longer do what it is that suits me or follow my own whim, but I follow the directions of a commander. I talked to a young man who served in the military, he's a veteran, in uh, his younger days, and I asked him some questions, wh what it means to be enlisted in the military. And I, the things he said I wasn't expecting. He said, being enlisted in the military changes everything about you. When you're in the military, it gives you discipline. It changes who you are from the inside. It changes how you dress. It changes how you walk. It changes how you talk. It changes everything about what you do and why you do it. Now, wait a minute. If I, as a Christian, am a soldier of the cross, doesn't that mean... Have you ever noticed that when you see someone who is in a specially active military, you can, just by the way they carry themselves, just by the way they talk, the way they act, the way they react, the way that you can tell that person is a soldier, that person is in the military. Shouldn't it be that way with you and me if we are soldiers of the cross? Shouldn't someone be able to watch how we carry ourselves, how we act, how we react, how we talk, how we walk, how we dress, and know that we belong to our commander in heaven? Why not? Uh, this uh, uh, individual also talked about the fact that it changes your discipline. It changes your discipline. 
how you do things and why. And that makes me think of the next part of that verse, entangles himself with the affairs of this life. He said, no one who is engaged, no one who is a soldier of the cross, entangles himself with the affairs of this life. I want you to think for just a moment about this word entangles. The Greek word means to entwine or to be uh, entwined to the point of entanglement. Makes me think of an insect who uh, comes across a spider web and maybe gets a part of a wing or part of a limb in that and at first it, it's a nuisance, but the more it struggles, suddenly it's completely entangled. Folks, that is exactly what this verse means. The idea of getting so involved, the affairs, pursuits and occupations pertaining to civil life. Now, it's interesting to me that the Holy Spirit through Paul chose to use a word in the Greek that had the idea of military, soldier in mind, because the word affairs had to do with pursuits and occupations that were of the civil life as opposed to the military life. Hmm. And by the way, that word life is a familiar word if we wrote it in English. It's a beta, a iota, and an omega. It is actually bios. Bios, biology, life. In other words, the affairs, the occupations, the pursuits of everyday living. Now, wait a minute. How does that apply to what we're talking about here? I have to be careful that I, as a soldier of the cross, don't get so busy living everyday life that I am no longer doing what I'm supposed to be doing in the first place. And I also want you to notice in Luke chapter 9 and verse 35, Paul, or Jesus wrote there, He who would come after me must take up his cross, must deny himself, and take up his cross daily. There Luke records the word daily, and follow me. Take up his cross daily. Every day that a soldier gets out of bed, puts on the same uniform, goes about the same regimen of activities because that discipline is there every day. Well, isn't it true that you and I as soldiers of the cross, that when we get up every day, we reaffirm that commitment. I'm going to live a certain way. I'm going to make sure that I don't get so busy doing the things that have to do with this life that I cannot serve God the way I should. I cannot function as a soldier of the cross. Come on, let's be real. Let's be real just for a minute. Look at your own life while I look at mine. This morning on the way here to uh, live stream this worship service and this lesson, I went by a ball field. Guess what? It's covered up. People are starting to get back out there. Don't let it be the case that suddenly during this time of quarantine, as we've been calling it, boy, I've been able to do more Bible study than ever, ever. Uh, well, I don't have time anymore. Why? Because I got back to living. Something wrong with that. Soldier of the cross lives a commitment. Paul said in Galatians 2.20, if you remember from a moment ago, the life which I now live in the flesh. Number one, a soldier of the cross lives a commitment. But number two, a soldier of the cross pays a price. Pays a price. Look at that verse. Must endure hardships as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Endures hardships in the English. That's only one word in the Greek. It literally means undergo a difficulty. Endure evil. Endure hardships and hard times. That word endure, that's a part of that Greek word, has the understanding that you're not consumed by them. You're not crushed by them. You deal with them. You get going. We love sometimes, especially men, I guess. If it's still the case, you could spend the entire Memorial Day weekend watching, uh, watching um, uh, binge on John Wayne uh, war movies and other war movies. Maybe you like the Rambo, where the soldiers get involved and no matter what happens to them, no matter how deep in the cave you bury Rambo, he's going to come out on the other side. We like that, don't we? This word, you know, we, we laugh at that and entertain ourselves with that, and maybe that's okay. But this word means literally you go through some terrible difficulties that come your way sometimes, and you come, on out, you come out on the other side. Why? Because you're a soldier of the cross, and you endure those hardships as a good soldier. In James 1, verses 2 and 3, Count it joy, count it a good thing when you fall into various trials. Why? Verse 3. Because the trying of your faith, faith, the trying of your faith works patience. I think about Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. Jesus there said to that particular group, do not fear what's about to happen to you. 
Satan's going to throw some of you into prison. Read the rest of it. To test you. To try you. Don't be afraid of that. Be faithful to death. And I will give you a crown of life. Listen to what he said. Don't be afraid of what's about to happen. There's going to be some difficult times, but you be faithful and you will come out on the other side. That's the attitude of a soldier of the cross. Pays the price, whatever it is, to live faithfully here on this earth. But number three, a soldier of the cross understands his or her weapons and his or her war. Now I want to make sure we kind of pause here and uh, pay attention. Look at that passage. Engaged in warfare. You might be thinking, now wait a minute, that, that's, a good, that's a good analogy, that's a good metaphor, preacher, but the idea of a Christian, me, I sit in my a pew on Sunday morning, can't wait to do that next week, by the way, and I've got my Bible in my hand, but you're talking about weapons. You're talking about warfare. Now, aren't you taking that just a little far? Well, when I look at that word engaged in warfare, and I look it up in the Greek to make sure uh, strateo is the word. I'm not trying to impress you with Greek, but that word I really liked because it's a verb. And that Greek verb means literally to wage war and to fight as a warrior. Now listen to me. Go back to what we were thinking just a moment ago. One of the, the movies that I like to watch if I'm watching old John Wayne movies is the one where he's in Vietnam. And I like to read stories about that. And maybe I'm watching a Rambo movie, uh, the one that's on TV that's got some of the stuff cut out of it. And, and I'm watching that movie, and you say, there's some terrible things happen. There's some, some bloody, horrible things happen there. That's exactly right, because that's what happens in warfare. And that's some of that hardship. But now this verb, engaged in war, literally means to fight as a warrior would fight. Do you think that changes the way I may need to look at Satan, my enemy, 1 Peter 5 and verse 8? That I need to understand what's going on there just a little bit? I was a little frustrated when I read in the ESV because it says here a soldier instead of saying no one engaged in warfare. It kind of left that part of the meaning out. But then I liked it because I understood what was happening. They made the connection to be a soldier means you fight. To be a soldier doesn't mean you just sit in a corner and nod your head. You actually have to fight or you're not a soldier. And according to this passage, you and I are engaged in warfare. Fight the good fight of faith. Now there's no way you can color that, water that, put flowers on that to make it mean anything but what it says. You have to fight a fight. It's a good fight and it's a fight of faith. In 2 Corinthians 4 verses 3 and 4, listen to what Paul says there. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, King James, are not fleshly, physical, but mighty through God to the pulling down of throne, throne, uh, strongholds. But what's he saying? What do you think he's saying there? The weapons of our warfare. That word's plural, by the way, weapons. Before I come back to that, let me pause and jump to the next verse. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 11. Do you see that word, warreth? He said, abstain from fleshly, uh, that's King James, fleshly lust which war. I hope you'll, oh, I hope this, ver, this passage, this study, makes you want to study some more. I hope you'll read 1 Peter 2.11 some more today and think about it. That verb war, the fleshly lust which war against your soul, guess what word that is? Guess what word that is? That's strateo. Just as surely as I'm standing here in front of you with God's word in my hand this morning and us trying to study together, that you can rest assured Satan comes at you with a warrior as a warrior with weapons. And if you don't respond in kind on the spiritual plane of warfare, then you're in trouble. Paul said the weapons of our warfare. I go back to the young man I told you that I spoke to, and he said something I wasn't expecting. He said, when I was in the military, I had a camaraderie. I had a friendship with a group of people who became my brothers. And when I got out of the military, I went the wrong direction and got into some things that I had to get rid of and turn my life over to Christ. I was looking for that same thing. And then he looked at me and he said, I found it in the church. I found it with God's people. And oh, I understand what he's talking about. The weapons, plural, 
you and I have weapons. I want you to do something today, this afternoon. I'm going to give you homework. I don't want to know if you do it or not, but I want to give you homework. I want you to take a blank sheet of paper and I want you to number it 1 to 10. And if I were to, to look over at uh, Brandon, who made the announcements this morning, and I know that uh, he loves softball, and I know that he works, if I were to say I want you to list 10 things that a softball player has to, to have and know how to use, you could do it, couldn't you? And if I looked at one of you who enjoys cooking, and I said, name 10 utensils, that word uh, weapons in 2 Corinthians 4, that word means utensils, instruments, equipment. And you were to name 10 things you had to use in the kitchen and know how to use it, you could do that, couldn't you? Those gentlemen who are helping live stream this morning, morning, 10 things that make this happen, they can name them. Now, can you name 10 weapons that you have at your disposal that you know how to use against Satan? We need to be able to do that. A soldier of the cross understands his weapons, understands we're at war. And then last, number four, a soldier of the cross is remembered beyond this life. Well, you know I wore my uh, tie because it's Memorial Day weekend, probably the only time I wear it, that in the 4th of July. And there are many people who are going to go uh, for decoration days um, at cemeteries to remember those who have died in this particular time. But a soldier of the cross is remembered beyond his life. Now, before you think, wait a minute, uh, yeah, we do that. We, we, we have decoration days, and, and we put in our bulletins, I'm not talking about us remembering. You look at the end of verse 4, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Don't you understand, if you're a soldier of the cross, you belong to the commander, and he always knows your name, and he always will remember you. In fact, in Psalm 116, in verse 15, blessed in the eyes of the Lord are the death of his saints, or precious in the eyes of the Lord are the death of his saints. Now, for us as human beings, on the hearing side of the cemetery, that sounds kind of harsh. It's not harsh at all. Precious in the eyes of the Lord of the death of the saints. Why? Because they belong to Him. And then you go on in Revelation 14 and verse 13. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right. Thus said the Spirit, uh, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, saith the Spirit from henceforth. Yea, they shall rest from their labors, and their works follow them. What do you think is being said there? Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. They rest from their labors and their death and their works follow them. For us, that gives comfort as we think about what's beyond for us. But I want you to think on the heaven side of that. God knows who His children and who His soldiers are, and He remembers them when they pass from this life because they're with Him. That's a... a Awesome thought for me. But I want you to think about this. Are you a soldier of the cross? I don't want you to go from here today saying, yep, that preacher did what most preachers do. It was Memorial Day, so he preached a, a Memorial Day lesson. Absolutely not. If that's all you got, you miss pretty much everything. No offense. But to be a soldier of the cross means more than, well, that's just a way of looking at Christians. No, it means a way of life. It means a way of living. It means an understanding that you and I have to have. Are you a soldier of the cross? If you're not, I hope you'll think about obeying the gospel. Prayer reminds the Lord's Supper. And when my love to Christ is When my love to Christ grows weak, when for deeper faith I see, then in thought I go to Thee, Garden of Gethsemane. When my love for man grows weak, when for stronger faith I see, hill of Calvary I go to thy scenes of fear and woe. 
into life I turn again, learning all the worth of fame, learning all the might that lie in a full self-sacrifice. we prepare to take the Lord's Supper, I pray that each of us would think back to that time on the cross that God gave his only son and that Christ gave himself for us as a sacrifice. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you so much for your love for us. We thank you so much for your son and that sacrifice that he has made, that you have made. We pray now, Father, as we partake of this bread, that we will remember his body that he gave for us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this cup which represents the blood that Christ shed for us. We pray each of us would remember that sacrifice and we would think back to that time and, and all that you've done for us. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. This concludes the Lord's Supper. We, uh, again, thank you for joining us this morning on our live stream. And uh, we have a few announcements that we would like to make to finish our service this morning. Remember to visit our website to give online by bank draft or to find addresses to mail or drop off your weekly contributions. Uh, next Sunday, May 31st, is the fifth Sunday giving, and this goes towards missions. Also, uh, Bible class resources for your child's classes to continue their study at home. You can visit our website to find those. Also, the Lord's Supper emblems are available for pickup in the annex until 6 p.m. during the week. On May 31st, we will resume Sunday morning worship at the building. That's next Sunday. Uh, we hope you can join us for our services here. I know. Many will be excited to be back together for that, but that's next Sunday, May 31st. Also, next Sunday is Senior Sunday, recognizing the 2020 graduates, and I will mention that there are tables set up in the Annex uh, to honor our seniors. If you would like to honor them by giving a gift, you can come by the Annex and leave on the table there in the Annex. And also, service, services will continue to be streamed on Sundays at 1030, and Wednesday at 7 p.m. We'll mention the audio stream. If uh, you would like to do that, you can call 662-554-4200 and press 1 for the audio stream. Please remember if we can assist you in any way to call one of the elders, call one of the deacons, reach out to us any way you can if we can help you. You can send us a message through Facebook or email our office. Remember that we have Bible studies hosted on Zoom at 11.30 following the worship stream. The youth Bible study will be hosted by Jordan Coates, and the college Bible study will be hosted by Bo Gross at 11.30 if he can make it over there in time. Also at 2, the ladies' class will be hosted by Lauren Brumley. For details, see our face group, Facebook group, uh, Boonville Church of Christ member group. We thank you for joining us this morning. We're so uh, thankful that you've chosen to worship. If you will, let's, uh, let's pray and we'll be dismissed. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we've had to be together to worship. We're so thankful, Father, again, that we have this technology and that we uh, were able to live stream our services and that we have men who are willing to be here to uh, continue our worship together. And we're thankful, Father, that 
We'll be back together next week, and we we'll just ask you to please uh, be with us here. Keep us safe. Father, we're mindful of, of all the many things that we take for granted, and I pray that each of us remember this as uh, we think about this quarantine, and, and that we will thank you and be more mindful of those things. We love you, Father, and we thank you for your son, Jesus. We ask all this in Christ's name. Amen.